series. This is Seven Magnificent Gladiators from 1983. Um, strangely, this movie appears to have never been released on anything other than VHS. I, I couldn't find a DVD copy of it, even, you know, Italian or, or anywhere else. So this is a uh, bootleg from a VHS print. It strikes me as a little bit odd, considering Lou Ferrigno's in it. At, you know, even at worst, a cult type of label should have released this. Uh, so, I mean, the movie itself, it's uh, <laughs> loosely based on Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, in, in that, you know, it's a group they go and get seven people to overthrow the evil overlord. The movie starts out with the uh, evil guy. He almost looks like a wizard. He's in this really freaky leather, like, cape with a giant neck backing thing and he's terrorizing the people of the village and of course they don't like it come to find out his own mother has disavowed him for his evil ways and he's serving the emperor not really a lot of connection between the emperor and that character but either way we know he's evil and we know he's going to do bad things like raping and taking you know raping the women and pillaging their villages if they don't give him you know his his due so his mother reveals that they have a secret magic sword in a in some kind of statue thing uh and the sword will reveal their true hero the person who can save them all so a group of women from the town goes off and adventures to the big city where they will hopefully find their hero. Uh, the first person they meet, you know, is a little bit shady. They give him the sword and it does some magic stuff which makes smoke come from their hands if you're not the one. And, you know, he drops it collapsing so we know he's not the right guy. Again, at this point, I'm assuming the sword... I hadn't, I hadn't actually seen this one prior to watching it the first time. I thought maybe the sword was going to turn some guy into Lou Ferrigno, you know, like a Hercules type of transformation. But then we go to Hercules and another character, uh, Scipio, or as they call him in the movie, Scipio. The dubbing's a bit off on this. And they're doing a uh, chariot racing, doing some fighting. And not bad. It's a good little chariot race. Uh, a lot of whipping going on. I mean, it's... Cheap production values, not cheap for Mate, but cheap for most uh, production type things. And again, this isn't a historical movie. It's kind of set in an alternate fantasy world, like a conquest or barbarians war. You know, as they they had to make ever. I swear, every single director had to make one of these movies. Um, well, the Italians, and you know, it's it's not bad. The Emperor is this great, like just again crazy eyed, overacting character wearing some insane gold helmet. At the end, Ferrigno's character wins, and he tells him to kill the other guy, and he says no, and they jump off and right away escaping. What's funny, Sybil Danning uh, plays one of the female protagonist characters, and strangely, she's not naked in this movie. Kind of a bummer. The movie's almost a... Not even almost. It's easily a PG movie. There is no blood, really at all no violence i mean it's not bad it actually feels okay in the movie it's just surprisingly tame from a tay flick um <laughs> there's a great scene of acting when her she's betting on scipio to win and when he loses there's a dramatic one shot of her face nice close up and she goes with that much emotion so the movie's filled with just some awesome Terrible acting. I mean, they're all dubbed too, but man, some of it's just awful. And they ride off and eventually end up back with the Emperor and they encounter the girls with the sword. The Emperor, it, she explains the sword has divine power to 
blah, 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 and the Emperor says, Ah, oh, I am a divine being! So he grabs the sword, of course, it burns his hands in lovely melodramatic style, which eventually Lou Frigno gets the sword, and ba -ding, he's the chosen one. Now, again, nothing really happens, so whatever, he gets the sword. Uh, they le they escape out of the Emperor's place and go meet the village where the women are from, where they all talk about what they gotta do, and they agree to save all the people. Along the way, they encounter various characters who join their, their band, and we get our seven characters. Uh, they free the city, but then we find out they're gonna come back, you know, and the woman who's the leader of the city expresses her discontent that they'll be alone now because none of them would want to stay in the boring village doing farming work. Uh, so she makes a deal with the bad guy to save her village as long as they get rid of Ferrigno and his gang. So they all leave, but then they turn around and come back to save the village because they realize that obviously the, you know, mustache twiddling bad guy was wrong because he, he even killed his own mother, which was their only real the big supporter of rebelling against them. So you get a pretty cool, like, big fight scene with all the characters doing the little tricks. You got the acrobat guy, the knife guy. Nice long fight scene. Frigno doing, you know, his tossing of people. Uh, and randomly in this scene, uh, Sybil Danning's character, some guy walks by and goes, Hurr! and slices across her back, and she dies. And it's never mentioned again. They never talk about it. She was a fairly prominent character up through the movie. <laughs> she died. Oh, well. Uh, it, was, it was kind of strange. There, there was no purpose for her to die in the story. And, and since they never talk about it again, it, it, it's even more bizarre. Like, maybe she didn't die in the script and they lost the footage? Uh, anyway, they rescue him and ride off, and one of the guys decides to stay with the girl that he loves. Now, the love, of course, the love scene is like built up in a couple minutes. So, you know, and Ferdinand and Scipio ride off into the sunset because they don't want to be tied down to farming. Not a bad movie. I, I mean, I, again, if I saw this as a kid on TV, I'd totally be into it. The, the hokiness wouldn't be there. I mean, I remember watching Conan the Destroyer when I was young, and that was still okay, and that movie's horrible, too. So, this is a, a solid effort. Um, Matei also credits Fergasso as directing on this. It's, it lists both of them as directing. Again, how is this any different than most of the Matei movies? Because, you know, they always filmed first and second unit together, so I'm not really sure it makes a difference. It, it comes off, this is a, it seems like a larger budget film. As far as they have some bigger sets, again, you got a bigger actor like Ferrigno at the time. And you got, you know, the film stock definitely looks a little more consistent and nicer. But you're kind of, you're missing all the sleaze that is inherent in most Matei flicks. So it's kind of a toss-up. It's, it's fun to watch, especially looking back at Matei's career, but you're going to be disappointed if you're looking for any of the dirtiness that he usually has in his movies. At the same point, you've got some awful acting, some really badly choreographed fight scenes. It's almost worth watching just for that. Plus, try to follow the plot in inconsistencies is pretty hilarious. So, uh, it's a good flick. Seven Magnificent Gladiators. I, I enjoyed it. I'd give it a nice uh, a 7 out of 10. Um, I'm not even going to review the print. It's a VHS boot. There's really no point. It it's watchable. I the, the credits are letterboxed, and then you lose it after that. I I'm just really surprised no one has released this even on DVD. Hopefully, somebody will grab up more Matei movies and put them on Blu-ray. At least we got some coming from uh, Blue Underground in 2014. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, should This should be a... Uh, you should be watching this right around Christmas time, so get some Matei for Christmas. And we'll see you next time here at Movie Mayhem.